You want it? We have it. The hottest mortgage and real estate strategy broadcast in the nation. A Smarter Way Home with your host, Danielle Boot and Victor Bales. 50 years combined experience ranked in the top 1% in the nation for Home Loan Originations 2020. Promise to expand your knowledge, utilizing creative mortgage financing and home buying strategies. Build a bridge for a better quality of life. Get your brain cells firing for a smarter way home. And welcome to another episode of A Smarter Way Home. My name is Victor Bales. I am your host, a loan officer for over 22 years, and we have modern mortgage and home buying solutions for both real estate professionals and consumers alike. It is the end of October 2022, and boy, is there turbulence in the market. But uh, we're going to talk about that today, along with a great guest. But I, at first, I'd like to introduce my hostess with the mostest, Mrs. Danielle Boot. Good morning, Victor. How are you? I am good. It is cold here today it in is. Detroit area. And uh, I got to the office at 5.30 this morning, and the parking light lot lights are still on. So, oh, good. So, so, okay. So good. that's pretty good. good. But what, That's a good way to start the day. That's a good Something Way, worked. Good way to start the job there or the day. So anyway, what do we got going today, Daniel? So it is my pleasure to introduce our guest today. Bev Barton with Living Well Realty is a broker owner of a multi-state real estate company. She is a native of Brighton. She has been a realtor since 1988. Um, and we invited Bev on to kind of give us some unique perspectives. She lives in two different states. She still sells real estate in two different states and manages her brokerage with agents in Michigan and agents in Florida. So she is a good friend of mine. And although it's hard to keep up with her these days because her and her husband are all a kind of traveling and spend part of the year in one state and part of the year in the other. So actually, I'm jealous and I'm envious and I will follow you someday. So um, welcome, Bev. Good morning. And it's great to see you. Good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation. I always like being around you, Danielle. It's very fun. And Vic, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, we got Kana tomorrow. She wants to join us on. Oh, that. Yeah, sweet, yeah. So sweet. That'll be pretty cool. So, give us the scoop, Bev. Uh, what brought you into the industry? Why do you migrate between two states? Uh, what got you where you're going, uh, where you're at today? Actually, um, I am an urban planner. I uh, got my degree in urban planning, and I'm embarrassed to say I am two classes shy of having a master's in ad public administration. Wow. But um, I worked in government for almost 25 years, and I thought, geez, this is kind of like a perfect segue. I mean, I love everything having to do with land and communities and uh, subdivisions, how they're developed, nature, the protection of our environmental uh, resources. And it kind of made a perfect next step for me was to get into real estate early. I sat on lots of boards um, and did my public and civic duty and trying to make responsible growth happen. So um, as part of that, I got into a wonderful opportunity of coaching through our administration at the government um, entities I worked at. So that was that was probably my significant step into kind of the living well concept. You know, you you waking up every day, and that's how it all started off. What what are your first five minutes like? And I'm talking down to the nitty gritty details. Are you putting pressing an alarm? Um, you know, what kind of shower soap are you using? What do your towels look like? Are you happy to go to your closet? You know, those kind of details kind of start your day. And then after I got into the living well coaching, I've developed some classes. I used to teach at Michigan Works. Um, I thought about it's not just how you live, it's where you live. So I got the real estate portion of that going and became a broker and, and, uh, I uh, have loved and cherished the places I've worked before this, but decided, you know, I know I was going to live in multiple states. It kind of makes sense for me to do this on my own. So that is what got me into the business and doing what I am now. That's excellent. So 
Um, uh, prior to the show starting there, we were talking about your, your son is in real estate too. And uh, he, he decided to follow me. He used to work uh, for his father's company and said, you know, I just don't feel like I'm living up to my potential, which again is what my how you live portion of living well is all about. I said, Elliot, I think you are, um, you've got the personality to do sales. I, I really hope that you will at least consider this potential. And he decided when we moved down to Naples six, eight years ago, he came down and visited and said, oh my gosh, I want to live here. I said, well, make it happen. He took his class and Vic, Danielle, I can't tell you what an enormous success he has been in the industry. He loves it. I mean, it comes right out through his heart. How exciting and amazing to see his growth because I think I met him, what, in his early 20s? Yes, you, you did. know, hard work. He's, he's place, was he? <laughs> yeah, hardworking young man, but you know, it's hard to figure life out when you see, especially when you see your adult child find something that they're passionate about and can create their livelihood from. I mean, you must be super proud as a mom and a dad, right, for Bill, but you go, this is what your whole life was about, raising your boys, trying to get them to the best place that they could be despite life and the choices they have to make, right? So that's, that's exciting right. to see how, how he's grown. The, yes, and it is their journey, but it is nice to be able to share something we're both yeah. very passionate about. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested because you do real estate here in Michigan, but you're also down in Naples doing real estate, you know, and the big talk is there, you know, what what happened to Florida with the hurricane just north of you. Can you explain what the environment down there, what the, the general consensus is, the feel for real estate? What's going on down there? Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me kind of, I, I, I will tell you, absolutely. Let's talk about the two different markets up in Michigan, just yeah. so then you can see the surprising contrast. Okay. So, Charlevoix is a little bit like Brighton. I think we're down in terms of inventory about 25%, but prices have gone up in um, the median or average price of uh, homes in Livingston County. I think for Elkar stats has gone up about 4% or something like that, where in Charlevoix, Walloon Lake, East Jordan, Petoskey, Harbor Springs. And when I talk about that area up here, that's what I'm talking about. The prices are up about 12%. So wow. inventory's down, but it's still a place that people want to live. Now, is it is it primarily, what what's the mix of that Northern Michigan area for second homes versus primary residence? Yes, it's about, it's, it's a lot of second homes, more than mm -hmm. Brighton, of course, you know, but, um, you know, I live right here on a corner and four people right around me are, they're all second homes for them. Okay. They're from Texas, Ohio, England, um, all over the place. So it's surprising. I was a little shocked. I did a mortgage earlier this year for a buyer from Texas purchasing a second home. Um, and I'm going to totally forget the name of the lake. It's right near... Traverse City, um, 1.5 million on a second home. Yeah. And they said they were, they were actually rather a young couple with young children. And they said, well, my husband's from Michigan. We always come to Michigan in the summer and we can no longer find a place to rent that is big enough for the whole family. Cause they had like three, four kids, both husband and wife have careers. They want to kind of come up in the summer. They said, Texas is too hot. And I went, you're coming. Okay. You're going to buy 1.5 million on a lake in Northern Michigan. You know? Okay. Interesting. You know, where years ago that I remember it was Michigan people buying properties up there. Well, you know what happened? Um, uh, Warren Buffett bought out a lot of the local, um, brokerages oh. up here and he was telling and trying to sell the whole idea in new york you're if you're in manhattan two hour drive you're in martha's vineyard or um what's the other island right there um hamptons hamptons yeah and the average loan price and that was five years ago was about 860. he said for a two hour drive you can go to northern michigan or a two hour flight you can go to northern michigan the average home price back then was two hundred and thirty thousand dollars so wow. that kind of made sense and the other the other part of this is that people like for instance elliot got married this year up here and his partner in um florida is from the bahamas born and raised in the bahamas and he got up here and he said i've never seen fresh water 
this looks just like the ocean. This looks yeah. just like the Gulf. I cannot believe this. And I think more and more people are finding out you can come up to Michigan, live on Lake Michigan and not even feel, and you don't have to worry about hurricanes. You don't have to worry about flooding. You don't have to worry about all the environmental impacts that come with living on a body of water that is similar to, you know, the Gulf or, or the ocean. So we're getting a lot of that up here now. Yeah, and, which which brings in a different price point, and that is going to push the houses up because, that's right. you know, Michigan real estate <laughs> typically is very affordable compared to other parts of the country. Now, some people will complain about the property tax levels, but when you look at it, you know, it, it is very affordable compared to other regions. And the issue, and, and, and we'll dive, of course, into Florida, and I do keep you know, tabs on the, on the Southwest Florida market as well, but money is coming from other states. And this, I think, is extremely different than in those, let's call it second home areas, than we've seen anything in the last 25 or 30 years. So as, just as you mentioned, people from New York might be coming to Michigan for second homes. People from Texas are coming to Michigan. People from Chicago are coming to Michigan. People those people are also buying in Southwest Florida, which has pushed the prices up dramatically. But the big thing that I've seen is the amount of cash. You know, oh, everybody's yeah. worried about overinflated values. But if, for instance, if you're leaving New York, which has a horribly high tax base, very high property values, and a very high state income tax, you can live a lot of other places cheaper. So there are people that, I mean, there, of course, or are, vacation or vacation. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, they, there's people leaving those high tax states, pulling out their cash and buying in other places. You know, they're not going to just sell their house for less than they paid for it. If, you know, you got a million dollars cash or $2 million cash, um, you know, the neighborhood Bev Hidden Lakes in oh, yeah. uh, Green Oak Township. You know, those homes in some cases on the water are selling for what? One and a half to two and a half million. And the majority of them are cash buyers. And some of them are young from what we hear from the real estate agents. We're like, really? So somebody in their 30s just paid two and a half million dollars cash. Like, hmm. You know, they're in tech, tech industries, small business owners. And you go, well, this is interesting. You know, well, you know, and, and I want to touch on the second homes and the investment properties because, uh, you know, those type of people buying those are taking a lot of the inventory, mm-hmm. which is also squeezing our inventory because, you know, the stock market hasn't been performing the way uh, an investor may want it. So they're saying, you know what, rents are going up. Maybe it's better to buy uh, a second home or an investment property, right. which is taken from our inventory of those looking for a primary home. And now we're starting to see there's a cost to the premium of buying second homes and investment properties coming from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So I think that's having a little impact there too on in inventory. And I think we're still in kind of that post-COVID mindset, right? People mm-hmm. didn't take vacations for a while. And if you think, well, do I want to go to a hotel where there's a lot of people or do I want to go to a home that only I have it, you know, habitat yeah. or, ha- you know, what's the word? I lost a word. Isn't that terrible? Up. The home, yeah, yeah, the people, home that you yeah. live in, like you can, like you typically, could be, you could be six foot away. <laughs> yeah, when when <laughs> we go to Florida, we like to rent a house because it's so relaxing. If I want to spend a day by the pool by myself, I can absolutely yeah. do that all day long. Yeah. Absolutely. So, what is the market up there right now with the higher interest rate environment? Is there still the the buzz to hey, let's buy a house, or are you seeing some slowdown because of uncertainty in the market, uncertainty in the economy, uncertainty of the election coming up? What are you seeing, Bev? I do have buyers right now, and uh, some are young. Some are um, uh, thirty, and they're buying in really big ticket areas, and then some are looking for a second home and um very excited about it you know what we tell them hey it's better to buy low you know prices are going down up here a little bit buy low interest rates are high you can you know refinance later and i think vic you had the great what'd you say marry the marry the home and date the loan or yeah. what's the one you date say? Date the rate. Marry date the, the house, date, date the rate. Yeah. Yeah. I like marry That's the home a, and date the loan. It's a yeah, little more kinda, rhymeful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it ain't no, bad. And that makes a lot of sense. And in Florida, in contrast to what's going on here, in Florida, 
you know, their inventory is down about, uh, what's, what is it here? I'm sorry, I got it right here. Oh, here it is. As And this is as of September before Ian happened. Ian happened okay. on the 27th of September. So um, the inventory was down almost 44%. And inventory prices... meaning inventory meaning less homes available than a year exactly. ago. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And house prices are up about 22%. So, having said that in terms of, you know, packaging it into what we're talking about now with rates, about 50% of those people are paying cash. So the rates don't now, matter. No. The right. rates don't matter to them. Here's the issue now. The insurance costs do. Yeah. So, okay. So most of the houses, Daniel, you've been down there, Vic, I don't know if you have or not. And I'm only speaking about Collier County. Collier County is the highest place in North America per square footage for multimillionaires, uh, barring Vancouver, I think. Mm-hmm. So when they go down there, they buy a $47 million home, they're not paying insurance because their insurance rates would be out of this world. They're going to repair whatever needs to be repaired. Right. They have so much now, money, they don't need insurance. No. So when I talked to my insurance agent when we bought this second home, she said, and these are her stats, about 72% of the people buying homes down there do not buy insurance. They've already wow. finished off paying cash you know, meaning they've paid cash on their house long enough that they're willing to put that money into insurance rates. If you're in a flood, now there's a flood zone, there's an insurance or a hurricane zone. So either buying one or the other. And um, some of them aren't doing that. Now, Elliot and after Ian had five closings, I'm going to say within 10 days, they were all postponed because nobody could get insurance except for the cash one. So that's making a oh, huge... Oh, and the cash one didn't get insurance because he paid no. cash. That's right. So they're not... That's, you know, that's what's holding things up right now. I don't think people are too concerned about that. It's going to, just like anything else, it's going to... We're going to have a building boom. So it what I've seen in Southwest Florida, um, that there's they actually have... St- Well, not even just in Florida. They have studied the real estate markets after a major hurricane, whether it was Andrew, you know, what, 15 years ago that hit the Louisiana area, Alabama, Florida, any of those areas. And typically three years after a hurricane, property values continue to rise. Did you know that right after... Anything happens, whether it's a natural disaster, an economic disaster, everybody goes to waterfront properties to invest in because prices have gone down. First place everybody goes back to. Yeah. So I I had talked to a realtor down in um, Lee County uh, within the last week or two, and she was telling me she has clients because she's done a lot on Sanibel, which is decimated, of course. So she has clients that have had homes in all these locations. Some of them lost everything in their home. I think most of them are second homes. They're already going, okay, watch for vacant land, for instance, in Cape Coral on the water. Because, for instance, Cape Coral was built in the late 1950s. So the older homes don't fare as well as the newer homes do when it comes to storms and hurricanes. And they're also built lower than today's standards. So she said, nope. She's already got buyers saying that ah, up to a half million dollars for vacant land because they're waiting for the lots to be, they're waiting for the homes to be torn down. They said if those older homes were damaged, the insurance company will pay to demolish it or the homeowner will pay to demolish it. And they, some people may choose not to rebuild. They may go by existing or leave the community, but there could be more vacant land available, which is going to be extremely desirable, especially on the water. That's right. Now, Irma, Hurricane Irma was more of a wind um, impact to the Mm -hmm. properties and and Ian, of course, was a flooding impact. Yeah. So Elliot said he has buyers down there, especially in old Naples where we were located mm-hmm. and where he's doing a lot of work, that are buyers, builders. I will pay your commission, including your seller's commission, 
find me vacant land, find me properties that do not have homes on them or the homes have been destroyed. But most of those with wood, right now you have to be FEMA standards at 10 feet above sea level. Yes, yep. Um, So most of the homes in Old Naples and Naples proper have been already, if, if it's a wood home, they're selling it for lot value. Yeah. already even before yes. ian happened so um people know that they can't stand you know stay in a situation like that it's just right. time well know. it's exciting for southwest florida when you really look at the construction techniques you know yeah. well because yeah. that's oh, all yeah, going to yeah. change right now if one of these wood homes were you know knocked down from flooding and all that stuff i'm assuming because of codes they have to rebuild of course 10 feet above sea level Correct. and what is it concrete walls what's yep. the standard down there it's block yeah they're, do- yeah they're doing block but they fill that block with concrete so okay. not just the block is there, but they're, they put, we sat there and watched them have concrete just blown right into the middle of the wow. block. And then they put concrete roofs up. So when you're sitting there and you've got hurricane windows and hurricane sliders, I'm not kidding you. You hear nothing. My son has really? a brand new house. He said we sat there. I mean, he was not in, I, I want to make clear, he was not into an area that had an evacuation. If he had, he would have left but they were not in the zone that was required to evacuate. So, um, but he sat there and he said, you, you could see the wind, you couldn't barely hear it. So the standards they've put forth, he just sold a house, a six and a half million dollar house last year, I think right downtown. And they have a pool on the ground floor. And it was a wood built structure Well, they're fixing it all up. They're going to not tear the whole house down, but they want to fix the pool. FEMA is requiring that pools at this point go on the second level. And when I say second level, like above the garage. Yeah. So there's some big money down there. And and, and why would that be to put a pool on the second floor? I don't understand if it gets flooded, you just clean it out and fill it up again. Well, you're Uh, not supposed to be using the lower level of a house at all and people are still closing them in they're still putting them in Uh, they're uninsurable those areas are uninsurable so if you want a pool up here if you want a pool from now on and you're just now building now when you go further south where we are that is not in those same flood zones the the structures are and requirements are a little different so there's, you know, uh, for me, uh, let's say I wanted to be a snowbird and move to Florida. I better definitely hook up with someone like you that understands these FEMA codes for each area, because I could go put an offer on a home, not understanding that it may not even be insurable or right. uh, it's out of code. That's exactly right. You have to be very careful in what real estate agents you choose. And I'm not kidding, especially down there like that. Yeah. The other thing is they're a little bit different in terms of our or uh, co- contracts, you know, down there, you can't, you can't strike a line out. You can't do anything. They're very simple. You have a, a, a um, two contracts you can choose from and that's it. That's it. You mean and purchase it, contract. Purchase agreements. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so they make it very clear, but they are looking out for, um, there's a lot of foreigners that buy in Southwest Florida. I mean, all yeah. over the world. Yes, And absolutely. then there's a lot of seniors that are down there and they don't want people taking advantage of. And I actually respect Florida for taking care of people that need to be taken care of like that. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. I had no Well, clue. and I think, I, you know, the, the baby boomers are still retiring, right? So the the youngest the youngest baby boomer is sixty right now. So the last year of the boomers was nineteen sixty two. Oh, I thought it was sixty three. I thought I was it the 63? end. That's me. Okay, you I could am, be the end. You I could am be the, the end. last baby boomer out okay. there. <laughs> so there are still baby boomers working. There are still baby boomers planning on retiring, and people are living longer than you ever that anybody ever expected in many many cases right so that's again like we talk about that up here in our market with the supply and demand issues but it's that's also happening in florida and we have more and more people thinking about pre-retirement second homes you know all of these factors in real estate that will continue to drive demand 
And I think it's good for people because people must, I mean, I know people are thinking about Florida. I want to be in Florida within a couple of years and be some kind of a working snowbird situation, but I can work virtually, right? It doesn't matter. So, you know, the hurricane isn't going to necessarily impact me dramatically. Real estate market will impact me more than the hurricane. Right. I I, want to go back to one point you said, it's going to take a very, you need a very smart realtor in Florida to understand the dynamics and the laws and all the FEMA codes and all that. But up here in Michigan, I often talk to realtors and they say, oh, I'm going to get my license in Florida. You know, I can almost see that as a double, double-edged double sword. How does a realtor from Michigan go about being a very reputable and uh, uh, knowledgeable realtor in Florida from, from yeah. Michigan? It does take experience and it takes people who are pretty passionate about the job. I mean, I live down there. It makes sense because I need to know all those things for me to live there, for me to bring my family and friends down there, for me to bring clients down there. So just saying you're up here going to do that. As a matter of fact, Vic, when you take your test, the test opens up and says only 20% of the people will pass this test. Ah. I mean, they're kind of discouraging this, but um, it, it only adds to, in my in my mind, it only adds to a realtor's education and experience and whether it's good or bad, it, it's all valuable, right? Mm-hmm. But even having a mortgage license in Florida is different than the, what the federal license is because they did take federal laws for mortgage regulations and they made them tougher. Yeah. And they made them a little bit different. They're higher. They're holding people down there to a higher Mm -hmm. standard Mm -hmm. and, and not just that, but now look at the environment. I feel so sorry for the people that were in Matt Lachey and Fort Myers beach and, you know, things like that. That was, that was devastating. Yeah. Santa, Santa Bell is completely wiped out pretty much. It's still devastating. And, you know, I don't hear much news about what is going down there on the reconstruction. Are we in Michigan going to lose a lot of our contractors because they're going to go work for the winter for the next couple of years because all the overtime is going to be there? What are are you seeing? Not not just that. We're going to have a, uh, they're predicting a shortage of building materials you know, trying to get drywall, trying to get, and, you know, you can't do things anymore in terms of, let me go back here about the protection stuff. They had the drywall that they got from China, that if you buy a house and do an inspection now, and it's found that you had those, that drywall, it all has to be taken out, removed and put back in. Same with the, the, the plumbing pipes. If you had the and I can't remember the big long chemical name for it, mm-hmm. that all has to be replaced. They are really out to protect us and our health and the environment. So anyway, having said that, we're not, we will be in competition. In fact, I have friends up here that are buying materials like crazy just to hold on to them because they're builders up here. Wow. Now, Danielle, you kind of touched on this in terms of younger kids, um, younger people, I should say, buying properties. Up here in Beaver Island, they had 120 new residents. They only have 600 wow. residents that are full time there. And then throughout the summer, they might get up to 3,000. But they have another 120 just in this, you know, this spring and summer because wow. people can work virtually now. Yeah. And that's yeah. made a difference for all of us. Why not go live someplace where you feel like you're on vacation, right? Right. So oh, exactly. They're smart. They're listening to us as parents and previous investors and saying, you know what? Time to buy is now. And if, um, you know, maybe grandma's leaving and nobody wanted the homes before. Well, now they're buying their family's homes. Yes. You know? yep. So yep. I'm sure you see that more than I do, but. It's, it's cool. It's, I really like how smart everyone's thinking, kind of looking yeah. forward to the future. Well, it is, is surprising. I mean, I don't, for instance, market in Florida, but my clients know that I'm licensed in multiple states and they'll go like, Hey, Danielle, we're buying a condo in Florida, you know? So, and that is happening um, on a regular basis. Even my daughter's best friend bought a condo down there literally two years ago in Naples before the market went crazy. And I was shocked when she called me. I'm like, you're buying a condo in Florida, you know, cause they live in Brighton, but the husband's a golfer. Yeah. So it made sense for them because he needs to golf all winter long. He can't stay in Michigan, 
you know, so yeah. it's it just, it's interesting to see. And when people go, oh, the real estate market's going to crash. I, there's so many layers of it today that didn't even exist 10 years ago that you really have to look at the big picture and go, okay, where is the money coming from? Where are the people coming from? And what, what do we think is going to continue? You know, um, and, and the real estate agent that I spoke to down in Florida recently said, no, look, if people that may have had their house destroyed, they might not be able to rebuild quickly because building already is a two-year process down there in most cases. But guess what? Then they'll start buying existing homes That's and maybe right. hold on to their land until the, you know, <laughs> till the market yeah. stabilizes. But people need a place to live, so they're not going to. So these people who... Uh, may have had a home destroyed if they go buy an existing home they are going to put even a further squeeze on inventory which will drive prices up even higher yeah i watch realtor.com just for fun down there that's kind of uh -huh. like my my decompression zone at night <laughs> and already the realtors have comments that say this house was not damaged by ian yeah, you know, you have so to put you, that in there. You know. And yeah. they are making people have inspections before closings yes. now, not just a walkthrough. This is now an inspection. What about sure at, what about at the done. listing appointment? When you go on a new listing, do you go ahead and get that certification up front so you can advertise this has been inspected and it's good to go? Or how does that process work? I don't know, Vic. I have not had that experience. It's only been, what, since the end of September, yeah. and I'm not even down there yet. Now, uh, my son's been going to some listing appointments. Um, I know that uh, with their seller disclosures, they're warning them to be very, very careful about what you put down on your seller disclosures. Okay. I think they can go back, what, six years or something if mm -hmm. you were found in um, in not contempt, but not being but, honest and truthful yeah, about what was going call. on there. So, but you know, now that brings us to the next phase. So Elliot's uh, lender that he used down there lived on a canal in Naples, Florida. His house was destroyed. He said, listen, I need a place to rent. And I need a place to buy now. So they hooked him up with a place to rent and they're looking for him with a place to buy. Um, as they were sitting there having the meeting, he said, now my insurance guy is telling me we're going to do insurance. The whole industry down there is going to change. You know, we're going to have percentages. You can buy a, you know, a 30%, 40% or 50% um, coverage. coverage, or you're going to have a deductible of that, you know, make your choice. So, wow. Yeah, they were already having problems with the screens and the lanai's that uh, insurance companies did not want to cover because it was a problem. Not right. only is the screen and lanai failing or blowing away in big hurricane events, but it was going over to two houses away and destroying their lanai. So right. it was a nightmare. I, I have a insurance company that we've worked all that kind of stuff out. So that worked out really well. But having said that, so Elliot had a two weeks before the uh, hurricane Ian happened, he had a $5 million house on the market, just put it up. And uh, some guy called him in Aqua Lane, which is a place that's probably two blocks from the Gulf. And those are start out probably at $4 million homes. His was destroyed. He called Elliot, said, can I rent this house? And the guy went back, you know, Elliot went to his seller and said, yeah, I'll do it for $38,000 a month, $350,000 a year. And they settled on $28,000 and three thirty, dollars I think, a year. Wow. So why, why wouldn't you buy a house? I mean, but I mean, you know, maybe he's used to a certain type of lifestyle and that's the way he's going to live while his house gets fixed up again. Wow. So. It's a total different, you know, animal down there. And you, you have to think a little differently. And these people didn't get this just from nothing. You know, they're, they're successful people. They've purchased wisely and their, their investment keeps going up. So the other thing is, um, there's never a shortage of people because you're marketing again all over the world. People from Brazil and South America come up to Naples to spend their summers, believe right. it or not. And yep. people from Canada and England 
And Italy There's a huge over. German population in the Cape Coral, Fort Myers area, huge. So the yeah. company that we rented houses from the last couple of years, it's a German company. Like I'm literally sending my money to Germany. And, but the people that own the houses that we rented were Americans. Yeah. But they are marketing it to, you know, German, yeah, German uh, travel travelers. That's funny. We like to vacation in St. Petersburg, uh, you know, every year. And uh, in the last couple of years, because of the kids' school schedules, we had to go down not on spring break or in February. We had to go down in June and July, you know, the hottest months uh, of the year. And it cost more because... <laughs> All the Europeans were over there, you know, oh, and, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, so it actually costs more in the, you know, in the mid of middle summer when it's the hottest and most miserable. So, well, that's but, when you want to be by the pool or the ocean. That's I mean, that's we not were. miserable for me. I, I'd be there 12 months out of the year if I could. <laughs> I agree but, with I, you. but I have yeah. a northern husband who yeah. I'm not going to get it out of his blood, but, I don't think. They're going to need a bigger tiki bar down there in June, you know. <laughs> I'll find you one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that kind of leads us into the next segue about Airbnbs and rentals. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Now, in Michigan, as you may or may not know, they have some new legislation that they're trying to get passed. I think it's been through the Senate, but not passed through the House yet, where they don't want to require local governments to keep people from Airbnb or verboing their property um, or short-term short rentaling of their property. Uh-huh. So in Michigan here... Um, I should say Charlevoix, the, the proposal is, is that you take 30% of all your residential units have to be allowed to have short-term rentals in there. They have people that travel, they have kids, they come for many different reasons. Um, for instance, I have a friend that's got two um, short-term rentals in Brighton, and they come and stay in his home to bring their children either to U of M or the new... Um, place in Brighton on next to Costco. Oh yeah. 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 Um, me- Oxford from- recovery center. Oxford recovery. Yes. So yep, for medical them. treatment. Yeah. And they don't want to go to a hotel room that feels cold. They want to come back to a home that feels warm. So there's a real need for that. The people don't, I think actually don't look at. So anyway, it is proposed like that. There's a lot of communities that don't want it. You bring some bad light you know you have a bachelor party here and things get out of hand and the kids from the neighbors you know i i I can see both sides of it but that new legislation has not passed yet now in florida they have some restrictions um on and i'm talking about there's old naples and then the city of naples proper and then collier county so old naples absolutely deters, although it happens all the time, people do the uh, weekly rentals there, but we're looking at, you know, 16,000 or $25,000 a week to rent down there, but you're two blocks. Well, then you have the next layer of your HOA. In Michigan, there's a lot of condos that will not allow you to short-term rent. And, um, you know, that kind of supersedes what any government's going to put in place, whether it's a federal government or the state government or the local governments. If, it, if your HOA says no local or no short-term rentals, you're not getting short-term rentals. So in Florida, we they have down there what they refer to as communities. We call them subdivisions. Some people in Ohio call them allotments. They call them communities. Communities down there almost always have an HOA. Some HOAs allow a weekly rental, but not very many. It's mostly a 30 day minimum. In my um, a community right now, it's a four month minimum. Oh, Elliot wow. and I do know of some that are a weekly, but you know, you don't want to end up ruining the community because you have a couple bad players throughout the, right. but most people that come and do that, they're family oriented and they get it, you know? Right, which is we've done a lot, and that's kind of why we wound up in the Cape Coral area because Cape Coral does not have communities. Cape right. Coral was built as individual lots, and there's a lot of builders in the Cape that have been there for decades, but it's more, you know, of a, a free situation. But in Cape Coral, the um, the government does require, the city does require inspections. 
of oh, the yeah. properties and they now make you register, which at first when I heard that, I was like, well, why would they do that? But even from a health and safety standpoint, you know, do the smoke detectors work? Do you know if you're going to rent a private party's home, if they're do, you know, are they getting the HVAC system cleaned properly so that it operates healthy? You know, um, what is the quality of that home and its upkeep so that there aren't safety issues, you know? Um, I agree. I think that's wonderful. And the city of Brighton does that as well. Mm -hmm. So there, here we are looking out after people again, that wouldn't have known. I mean, what you got CO2 I mean, you, leaking, you know, yeah, you, you have to be careful. And there was a, there was a story right in the country where I think a family died in, yeah. in a seasonal, in a short term rental because of CO2, right? Yeah. You wouldn't even think of that. It's odorless. You can't smell it. You don't know you go, you're on vacation, you're, you know, staying somewhere. So there are some health and safety precautions that you want to be careful of. So I think it is good. And I, I get the homeowners association situation, but in Florida, when we've been down there, most of the houses are seasonal. So we don't really even see a lot of neighbors, uh, you know, yeah. and when we do, they're nice people and we chat and just say, Hey, we're quiet and we're not gonna, you know, you know, Mess this is something up. you bring bringing up these Airbnbs, and we talked about insurance. So, is there special insurance on these Airbnbs in case that person does die of CO two uh, or something? Oh, yeah. it, well, that yeah, it's it's called renter's insurance, and I'm actually yeah. paying for it because a woman down in Florida called me and it said, "Hey, uh, Bev, our, I heard you leave. Do you mind? Our house won't be done for another year. Can we rent your place?" And I said, "Well." Uh, I wasn't thinking about it, but here's my price. You're willing to do it? She said, yes, great. So I had to call the insurance company and make sure they were very clear. We have a pool. They have a child. So we had to make sure that all of that was covered, you know. And if you're typically going to like an Airbnb thing, you don't know, right, unless you ask. And, you know, right. we, we've gotten lucky in Florida because we've gone through some kind of a rental company. Mm -hmm. And so you know that yeah. they have a very high standard for the quality of the home and the cleanliness and health and safety issues as well. But there's a huge demand so, for that. I mean, we, I, we looked at, I was down in Florida, um, actually it was January of this year and we had, my daughter and I went down and we stayed at a little hotel, which I normally do not do, but we were only there for three or four days just for a little kind of a girl's weekend. And we ended up leaving the hotel we were at because it had no water and we were going to go to a bigger hotel. It was like the Westin in town. The Westin would have cost me in January like $450 a night. And I will tell you, I have rented 3,000 square foot private homes with screened in lanai's and pools for under $300 a night all day long. Yeah. I mean, sometimes even cheaper. So the, the quality of what you can get when you're renting a home is huge. And, and on the flip side, okay, if you're a real estate investor, this is a niche market. Um, we had a client last year, one of our loan officers did a deal in Nashville. It was like a condo in Nashville over a million dollar purchase. And the guy, the gentleman actually bought two, two homes in, in Nashville at the same time. He bought a second home for himself and his business partner because they had business in Michigan and in Tennessee. And then they decided to buy this investment property. And I was like, really, who spends a million dollars on a condo in Nashville? And, and the loan officer said, oh, he's going to rent it out weekly. And within, I think, 30 days of closing, he had over $30,000 a month in income really? for renting this condo out. Yeah. Wow. It's you know, huge. And, and Nashville is kind of like seasonal all year long, right? Mm -hmm. People are yeah. going there 12 months out of the year. It's never too hot. It's never too cold. Y you know, and I would have gone, wow, Nashville, a rental property. So there are people that are focusing on investment properties just to do the short-term rental. And, and definitely right. it's niche and, you know, for sure, but the amount of money that people can make. I mean, if you've got the money to invest and can take that risk, I mean, it's a tremendous return and you hire a management company, which is popular in Florida, right? Um, you know, there are management real companies, estate agent. yeah. real estate agents, management companies that check on your house, you know, even like a pool company down there, it's ridiculously cheap. Landscaping, very inexpensive in Florida because everybody has a landscaper, so you look at that and go, well, it's not as expensive to maintain a property in some ways down there than it is up here. 
my taxes are so much cheaper than they are down there than they are yeah. up here in Charlevoix and that they are in Brighton. And I'm not even homesteaded in Florida. Yeah. So, and, and it's beautiful. As you know, when you go to Naples, you, every time you turn a corner, you're turning a page of a book and it's beautiful. I mean, oh, landscaping, yeah. it's, yes. it's just gorgeous. So, you know, we used to live uh, on the same st- street that the pier was on. We were six blocks from the Gulf and one block from the Bay. And we were on the second floor. We had hurricane um, windows and door walls. The people down below us, my friends, um, uh, some of them I feel so bad, wanted to move. They heard we moved. They wanted, Bill retired. He wanted a garage and a grill. I wanted a pool. So you can't have that down down there like that anymore. It's just yeah. in unheard of unless you've got multi millions of dollars to buy. So um, Elliot said, Mom, look at the Fairfax. That's where we lived. I said, Oh, my God, that's devastating. I'm so glad we lived on the second floor. Well, he walked into every all the doors are open. There's nothing in anybody's condo. I mean, wow. nothing. You could see the water line was between my shoulder and my waist, you know, depending upon which side of the house. And I said, oh, I'm so glad we lived on the second floor there. We never had to pay flood insurance. We only had to pay hurricane insurance. And that was very inexpensive because we had the, you know, door, door walls and windows. He said, mom, look at this. And he sent me a picture of the mold climbing from my lower level neighbors up to my old unit. Mm, And I said, you know what? I'm fine being further back from the, we live about five miles now from the, from the beach and I'm very happy and very comfortable. I have a pool. I have, wow. they put our subdivision in years ago, probably back in 2004. And it was so far out. They put their own gas station in their own stores, their own restaurants. We never lost power. Wow. There was, yeah, nothing. So we're very lucky wow. that well, and that's I, good. I'm very happy to be there, but the Airbnbs, there's a huge need for them. And yeah. especially now, and it, my friends, uh, I have a, a relative that's got one up here and he's probably at 70% capacity. And that is his first year. December was his first year or start or first month. And in, in Brighton, my friends, 95 to 98%. Wow. Full on yeah. both of them. Yeah. Do you get any, is there any pushback from all the hotels and all that stuff on these Airbnbs? I would see they would not want these things around. Uh, is there any lobbying well, on that? I'm sure they're the ones that kind of put this legislation, well, <laughs> fighting this yeah. legislation is what yeah. I'm trying to say, you know. Oh. And so, I, I, I think it's interesting, again, with you between two states. So if somebody wants to potentially move from Michigan to Florida or even vice versa, yeah. you know, having one realtor that you can work with, um, I, I just see that as a huge benefit and would make things a lot easier. People, you know, to coordinate Florida. two transactions. Oh. oh, yeah. And people are leaving Florida now, like Elliot said, and they're coming up here. They don't want to go through that event again. And number two, they still got the water that looks like the Gulf, but it's Lake yeah. Michigan, right. you know? Yeah. So if someone does want to get a hold of you, because you are just a wealth of knowledge, how would one get a hold of you? Could you give us your email address, website, or cell phone number? Yes, uh, it's www.livingwillcompany.com. And then my cell phone is 734-320-0121. And your email address, please. Oh, that's easy. Bev at bevbarton.com. Ah, that's the easy one. That's a good one there. So, <laughs> yeah. so as we wrap up the show here, um, what word of advice can you have for potential home buyers, home sellers, up north here in Brighton area or even down south? What is your words of wisdom for the market that's about to come here for the uh, spring buying season 2023? Well, find a good lender. Find a good lender that's going to work with you. Don't be worried about that interest rate right now because prices are going down. That price of that house is really where your equity in is. That's not, you know, it's not the interest rate that's, you know, shouldn't be holding you back. I know it makes a difference with buying power, but there's always options. So find a good lender to work with like you two that understand both markets, that understand uh, new buyers, investment buyers. Please, that's so important. Okay. And what is your 2023 forecast 
of the housing market. Where are we going with that? Well, before Ian, I would have said build, 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 build new. But now um, I'm thinking just buy whatever you can, invest closest to the water that you can get. Um, don't worry about an interest rate. Um, make sure you have some good uh, quality building materials. If you're in Florida, it needs to be a concrete house. It absolutely needs to be a concrete house. As a matter of fact, I was just telling my husband, we live now in a garage. We are building, just so you guys know, a bed and pantry up in Northern Michigan. So it's mm. not actually an Airbnb, but it's a bed and breakfast, but we're not supplying that food. We will have pantry you can open the pantry and feed yourself <laughs> oh i like that idea <laughs> in okay. a microwave <laughs> well keep, keep us posted on that i'm always looking for great places to vacation <laughs> okay. danielle do you have any uh, danielle do you have any closing words or comments for bev here well ever? thank you bev for joining us today it's great to see you even virtually if you're ever in brighton and got time for lunch or a cup of coffee could give me a call or send me a text I'd love to see you. And maybe we will connect one of these days in Florida. We don't have any plans uh, uh, this winter yet. We'll see. I'm, I'm kind of yeah. holding out to see how things settle down. Well, I'm in Charlevoix, too. So if you ski, snowmobile, want to see the colors, or in, of course, in the summer, there's nothing better. Well, that was Beautiful. Bev Barton. That was wonderful. We hope to have you back. You are a wealth of knowledge. Please reach out to her for any of your real estate needs. And uh, for Danielle and myself, uh, we'll see you next time here on A Smarter Way Home. <laughs>